Hello, Driving Intelligence community. Well, it's getting toward the end of the boating season. At least it is here in South Carolina. I probably got another several weeks. It's the end of September right now. But I need to get some projects done for my boat trailer to make sure that it's done in time to get the boat out of the water and put it in the, uh, in the garage for the winter before we get any kind of hard freezes here. Now, the biggest issue I've got is rust on one of the fenders. Well, that's not the purpose of this video, but since I had to take the wheels off to get that that rust removed and painted, I decided to do some brake work and also do some bunk board repair. Well, the purpose of this video is to talk about how to do uh, brake maintenance on unique functional products, drum brakes for these boat trailers. It's really pretty easy, rather messy because you got a lot of grease to deal with, but I'm going to show you how I took care of that and uh, added a little bling to my trailer brakes, so stay tuned. Now, getting into this brake, this is a unique functional products brake and um, I need to take this apart to determine why I have no drag on it. It probably just needs to be adjusted but I also want to inspect everything inside so before I adjust it I'm just going to disassemble it and I got to start with taking off this, this greasable dust cap. I used a hammer and a screwdriver to lightly tap that thing out. You can see that uh, I probably needed to take this apart get all that grease out of there to, uh, to put fresh grease in even though it is a greasable fitting. Now I need to take this cotter pin off, take that uh, protective cap and get the castle nut off so I can get this whole hub assembly off of the axle. Drum brake assembly has been removed and as I mentioned, uh, first is this castle nut cap assembly. There's two pieces there, the washer and the bearing that goes into the bore. I gotta clean that out, but now I can inspect the brakes and I see that I've got a lot of brake material left on those pads, so I'm in pretty good shape. I always go the extra mile when I do my work, so I've actually Use the power brush to get all that rust off in the paint, and I'm going to put some paint on there to keep it from rusting again. This also smooths out the surface so you don't have a, a, uh, a balance issue or run out issue with your wheel. In order to thoroughly clean the hub, I had to pull the seal out. That seal was right here. Get that bearing out so I can clean the bearings, clean the hub out, make sure that there's no residual old grease in there because that would not probably mix well with new grease. Anyway, the problem is getting a seal for this, this hub, and it's actually pretty easy. What I would do, or what I did, is I measured the inside bore here, and that came out to 2.33 inches. Then I measured this surface here for the inside of that seal. That came out to 1.68 inches. Went on Amazon and found the 2.33 by 1.68 inch seal and ordered it, two of them for 10 bucks. Can't beat Amazon. I'll link those in the description below of this video, but you ought to measure them yourself. Uh, those may work if, uh, if you have a similar hub. Received the seals for the bearing hub, so that's ready to go in. Now I gotta pull the bearings that I've had soaking in this parts cleaner for a while. Get all the old dirt and grease off of it pre-lube those or pre-grease them and then put them back in the hub. Now I pulled something out of my old bag of tricks. This is a universal bearing packer. I've probably had this thing 20, 30 years. But basically it sandwiches your bearing in there and it will push old grease out, any residual old grease out. And uh, this is a highly effective way of doing it versus packing grease in your palm and rolling the bearings on there until they're full. Left to do is to press that seal on. I happen to have a press in my garage. Uh, you can tap it on with a piece of wood or an oversized socket. You just got to be very careful when you're doing that. Far be it from me to do a project without a little bling. I had some leftover brake caliper paint, decided to paint these, really protect them. That's going to look pretty nice behind those boat trailer wheels. Now that I've got my bearing in there with the seal and I've got it all greased up, ready to go, it's time to install. But the first thing I wanna do is pull this plug, the adjusting plug right there that gets me to this adjuster. And I'm gonna make sure that I adjust this brake because it didn't have the proper drag when I was working with it before. Now before I put that drum on so you can't see what's going on, this little gear here, you can see my screwdriver behind it. I'm gonna push this through that hole and reset the gear if I can turn it there you can see me turning it 
I still gotta do it after the hub is on. I'm actually rotating it to tighten up that adjuster to expand the brake pads outward. I've got the other bearing in and I've also got the nut on top of it. Now I've got to torque this. Now previously I searched out and found that you need to pre-tighten this to 50 foot-pounds, then loosen it up and then finger tighten it. So you're preloading the bearing. I couldn't find the resource where I found that, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, put 50 foot-pounds of torque on this, loosen it, and then tighten it finger tight, and then put the cotter pin with the, uh, the crown on there. So as noted, I tighten this to 50 foot-pounds, I loosen the nut, and now I'm just going to do finger tight. Now I can install my brand new cotter pin. And now to install my bearing buddy. You can hear that it's dragging a little bit, which is what they call for in the instructions. So now all I've got to do is final grease it, put the cap on, the wheel on, and I can go get my boat.